Hola, eh, soy África Moya, soy la directora del Máster Trending Content en Barreira y actualmente eh, bueno, trabajo como directora creativa en, en Ogilvy y bueno, hoy estoy aquí para presentaros un poco cuáles van a ser los contenidos de, de este máster 100% online y para ello también cuento con dos profesores que un poquito más adelante pues nos dirán por qué están aquí, cuáles son las materias que ellos van a compartir con todos los estudiantes del máster y también un poco su punto de vista acerca del mundo de, de los contenidos. Si estáis aquí es porque, bueno, seguramente ya habréis buscado algo de información acerca de este máster, al que hemos llamado Trending Content, eh, nuevos contenidos y formatos. Y lo que ofrece este máster es un recorrido por todas las posibilidades que hoy en día se le ofrece a las marcas cuando hablamos de, de contenido. Llevamos muchísimo tiempo escuchando hablar de que el contenido es el rey, es una frase que hemos escuchado muchísimo, pero realmente todavía hay pocas marcas que, que lo estén llevando a cabo de una manera, digamos, eh, brillante o, o, o como referente. Pero es cierto que el contenido es el rey. Pero, ¿qué es el contenido? No? Cuando hablamos de contenido, eh, durante un tiempo hay gente que piensa que marketing content es como todo este tema digital, eh, parece que cuando hablamos de contenido también solo hablamos de este branded content, de estas superproducciones, pero realmente hoy en día, o por lo menos en mi opinión, ahora veremos a ver qué opinan nuestros profesores, pero hoy en día contenido es prácticamente todo. El contenido está en cada experiencia de marca, en cada relación que tiene el usuario con, con las marcas. Es decir, desde un patrocinio en un festival de música en el que hacemos una instalación, hasta la parte de audio branding de una marca o incluso un contenido editorial o, o, o una ilustración, infografía que de repente cuenta una historia importante acerca de, de nuestra marca. Y ese es un poco el, el foco de, de este máster. Eh, no queríamos centrar un máster de contenidos en un único contenido o en una única, una única especialización, sino que queríamos presentar a todos los estudiantes un recorrido completo. Es decir, queremos que cuando un estudiante acabe el máster de Trending Content sea capaz de manejar toda una estrategia de contenidos desde la parte más estratégica, propiamente dicha, pero también desde la parte creativa, como un overview, para que no solo puedas ser especialista en uno de los temas, sino que puedas hacer, contar una historia de diferentes maneras. Por eso el máster tiene cinco, bueno, tiene seis unidades. La primera de todas es la parte de storytelling, que también es una palabra que hemos escuchado mucho, pero que realmente hay que interiorizarla y, y creértela mucho, tanto cuando trabajas en una agencia como cuando trabajas en una marca. Dentro de esta parte de storytelling veremos toda la importancia de la narrativa tanto de marca como de producto y, y toda la importancia de no solo un storytelling narrativo sino también un storytelling visual con toda la parte de dirección de arte. A partir de ahí hablaremos un poco de nuevos lenguajes. Eh, a día de hoy cada seis meses tienes que estar renovándote, cada muy poco tiempo sale una... Quiero decir una red social nueva, pero no solo me quiero ceñir a redes sociales nuevas, sino, bueno, pues esos nuevos lenguajes o nuevas maneras de acercarte al cliente que están en continua mutación. Y, y, y una vez que tengamos este overview de storytelling y de nuevos lenguajes, tenemos como cuatro pilares en los que, bueno, vamos a profundizar un poquito más, como son el diseño editorial, el branded content, eh, la parte más experiencial y la parte de audio content. Contamos con profesores eh, internacionales, es uno de los focos ahora que ya sabéis que todo es online y que todo es en remoto con, con toda esta situación que, que hemos vivido. Eh, nos parecía una muy buena oportunidad desde Barreira eh, para hacer un máster que nos ofreciese esa oportunidad de tener profesores que nos cuenten procesos y experiencias en el extranjero, que sabéis que muchas veces, eh, bueno, eh, sencillamente es un punto de vista más fresco o diferente. Eh, y por eso también tenemos hoy aquí a, tanto a Julia como a, como a Lucas que tienen experiencia internacional y aparte de ellos pues tenemos a Stephen Gates que es el Head of, Vision, el head of Design de InVision y autor de un podcast de Crazy One que nos, ayudó, nos está dando clase dentro de la parte de storytelling, a Paulina Zack que es la vicepresidenta del estudio interactivo Silas Beta, Mimi Maselli, que es el cofundador de Soundmark, que estará en la parte de audio content, eh, ha trabajado con marcas como Red Bull o MTV, que son marcas muy potentes dentro del contenido y sobre todo del contenido musical o, o sonoro. 
Dai Tomanabe, que es un DJ, programador, eh, artista audiovisual o multimedia desde Tokio. O sea, como veis, tenemos referencias de muchos puntos diferentes. Y también tenemos a eh, Julia Zoabo, que es eh, ilustradora y diseñadora gráfica eh, actualmente viviendo en Nueva York, y a, y a Lucas Borras, que, bueno, que ha trabajado en, en Los Ángeles y especialista en, en branded content, en publi, en, en videoclips y, y demás. So now uh, we are going, I, I want to introduce you Julia Zoabo. I switched to English because uh, she's Italian and I think it's better to, to talk in, in, in English. And she will share with you uh, what's her idea about why storytelling is important, why visual storytelling is important, and also why editorial design uh, is important or, or what are the like the highlights of the editorial design right now what are the trends and what is happening around storytelling and uh, editorial design so hi everyone my name is julia zavo i'm an illustrator and graphic designer i'm italian but i'm based in new york i've been living in new york in the for the past four years and right now i'm a freelance and my work is to help a wide range of clients translating stories into visuals. So right now I'm working with advertising agencies, design studios, magazines, book publishers, and for all of them, I'm working to translate stories into images. So this is basically what we are going to talk about in my class. We're going to explore storytelling for different industries and media. And my background is in advertising. I've been working for many years in Italy as a senior designer in BBDO, which is a big network uh, in advertising. And then I moved to the US to work at Sagmeister and Walsh as a freelance illustrator. And now I'm a freelance and I work for many, many clients. My, right now, I'm mainly working with tech companies on contents for social networks. So for sure, visual storytelling in social networks will be a big focus of our class. And I think this is very important because right now everyone is on social networks. We are overwhelmed by images and also people have a limited span of attention. So it's super important and we're going to discuss how to create images that stand out in, in this big sea of images that we see every day. So what I realized in the past months we had so many changes in, in the war so many things were, were going on and the images were basically the way to communicate with each other I, images were the way people were sharing everything and also images were so important to understand what was happening so basically with with the pandemic with covid people were looking for more more and more info and one way To, to understand what was going on was with the visual infographics, for example. And with this new media, with internet, with this new way of, with the interactive way of displaying information, it was easier because once uh, visual storytelling was always static, now we can move it, we can interact with, with, with visual information. So, It's becoming more and more important to know how to use all the media we have, all the mediums we have, all the programs, all we can do with, with the visuals. And, and also another thing that, that I saw is that more and more organizations that before didn't communicate with social networks and didn't know how to sell themselves Mm. on social media now are on social media i don't yeah. know if you saw who fits in florence it's a museum yeah. and they didn't they didn't weren't famous for being particularly effective on social media but now they joined tiktok during yeah. the pandemic and they found an amazing way to display their picture and to engage younger audiences Yeah. So they are now a big case study and so of course we're going to we're going to study how powerful it is to understand the media you're communicating the audience you're communicating with understanding on why, on which social networks you are so what are the best visuals you can do how can you communicate on that 
So, yes, uh, you say, uh, um, Julia, something very interesting about the content and also about the master. I mean, one of the most important things for us is that uh, nowadays we are overwhelmed with all the impacts for brands. So we need, well, brands need to to go to the point and go to the to to, to the, the target but with the perfect message so this is one of the most important things of, of the master so well uh, as you said uh, visual storytelling is quite important now and uh, we are yeah. not just about infographics or just illustrations we are just yeah. telling that well you can share on a story not just by talking but also by yeah. showing it by images. So yeah, sure. And also the brands right now are talking with a super wide audience in the whole world. So it's, an image is more important than a million words because, for example, I, I'm working for Adobe. I worked for Adobe for a long time. And for it, it was super nice working for them because I was drawing and everyone was understanding on the other side of the screen what I was drawing about what what which story i was telling i was telling to through mm -hmm. my my illustration you know if i had to tell a story or present a new product with words it would be maybe boring or maybe not everyone would understand everything 100 percent. but with images it's super clear if you do a video of how a program works or if yeah. you show live how it is working on a specific program it's easier for everyone to follow you and to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. Yes. So, yeah. I think the, the point is that some brands maybe will need a big story with a copy like this with a lot of words or maybe a novel, but some yeah. others, they, they won't need this. So the point is to have the perfect content to the perfect target. Uh, yeah, yeah, we need to translate storytelling, uh, well, brand storytelling or product storytelling to the perfect content, yeah. the perfect format also, because we are always talking about content, but the word format is uh, very important for this. So, yeah. Yeah. And, well, we have, uh, Julia will share with the students some classes in storytelling and also in editorial design because... Uh, yeah. We think it's good to 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 have teachers that um, go with the students uh, around through some some uh, some units because I think it's uh, we think it's better. Yeah. And uh, when we talk about new languages and branded content, we have Lucas Lucas Borras. ¿Qué tal? Hola, cómo estáis? <laughs> eh, encantado de de formar parte de de este curso y bueno yo eh, he estado como unos 12 años eh, viviendo en Estados Unidos eh, primero en Nueva York y después en Los Ángeles he trabajado como director de publicidad y, y de, de diferentes medios desde branded content hasta videoclips a proyectos muy grandes para marcas como IBM donde hicimos toda la, todo lo que es el contenido visual de las instalaciones de su, de su sede de realidad virtual. Um, bueno, de realidad virtual más bien como de inteligencia artificial, ¿no? Um, y eso fue un proyecto, por ejemplo, enorme. Y luego yo he trabajado en proyectos pequeños, más de craft, para clientes que buscan algo muy específico. Um, entonces, um, tengo una visión bastante global también desde el punto de dirección creativa, um, con postproductoras como The Mill o Mass Market, estudios como Sayop, Eyeball, um, Abac. Entonces, eh, yo he trabajado desde con live action, stop motion, diferentes técnicas de animación, mix media. Uh, me interesa un montón um, los nuevos lenguajes y, de hecho, para mí es un placer poder dar el curso de nuevos lenguajes, eh, ya sea en castellano o en inglés. Eh, y, y bueno, yo creo que hay, cada día están saliendo técnicas nuevas eh, con un montón de cosas nuevas, ¿no? Técnicas, eh, cuando estuve dando clases en, en Los Ángeles en Art Center, ahí, por ejemplo, fue la primera vez, y de esto ya hace unos cuantos años, que vi realidad virtual 
y cómo se podía esto encajar en la animación uh -huh. y años después salió la película que estuvo nominada al Oscar uh, con uno de los directores de Pixar que, que luego hicieron una película increíble, ¿no? Que era todo realidad, casi realidad virtual aumentada, bueno, una mezcla de todo. Entonces, estos nuevos lenguajes realmente... Eh, están aportando un montón de ideas y también para las marcas, cómo representar eh, sus mundos y cómo visualizar uh, estas marcas en, en, en contenidos diversos y diferentes, tanto online como en eventos. Y luego cosas como títulos de crédito de películas, que, en las que también he, he trabajado en, en este tipo de ámbito y me interesa mucho. Entonces, yo creo que todos estos nuevos lenguajes eh, se retroalimentan bastante y cada uno, aunque la visión intenta ser global, ¿no? Para que luego cada uno un poco haga inmersión en lo que, en lo que más le, le puede interesar y, y también un poco hablar tanto de aspectos estéticos y de concepto como de cosas incluso que pueden llegar a ser más técnicas, ¿no? Um, para cómo desarrollar estas cosas. Yo creo que has dicho una cosa muy interesante. Uh, I will switch to English for Julia to understand. But uh, you've said something very interesting when you talk about creative direction. Because I think that creative direction now um, it's related with like a content strategy. It's, or maybe it's something that I have in mind. But uh, when you are working with a creative, Uh, you don't want the creative to be uh, well it's good if you have a creative like is a specialist in just one thing or one field but it's good when you have a creative direction very close or very related with content strategy because actually or maybe it's my just my point of view but my point of view is when you are a creative director you are like a content strategist Because you have to think uh, in a lot of formats, or a lot of ways to share your, your story, no? or the story of your client, the story of your brand. So I don't yeah, know I mean, what you think about this. Um, I, I think, you know, also my experience as a creative director, director, creative, um, it's been shaping during the past years in different ways because, you know, um, I do more and more direction for um, advertising and there is a um, there is a process there that is specific when you work with agencies which is creating a treatment presenting that and you know for example in the past i used to work with writers sometimes that i would team up and do the script together or their story and then little by little I'm, i you know i became a writer more and i mm -hmm. do do my own writing almost always now mm -hmm. and I think that's very important because for example visually I put words in ideas that I shape as I do the story and that helps me a lot to understand um, how I'm gonna make the stories you know like I think it's something sometimes you need to push yourself into things that you are not so used to or mm -hmm. that you initially are not so versatile and then and then that push makes you better and makes you go into directions that um, that maybe initially you thought that it will not be your area, you know? Um, yeah. So for me, for example, writing more has been something that has been helping me as a creative director. And then, yeah, I think the creative director figure uh, in general, I mean, it depends in the area that you're working. Yeah, sure. If you're in a creative director in an agency which has to supervise online, yeah. offline things from uh, websites to posters to like a, like a campaign for a video in an advertise. Um, and, you know, like creative direction in, in a post-production company, it's yeah. a completely different thing. Yeah, you know, it's sure. like a, somebody that, that will help shape the story that maybe another director is bringing but then they work with the capabilities of being half half uh, technician and then creatives who shape stories but then also they um, lead a, a big team of people that is yeah. on the studio that is working with them so i think you know um, it's also important to understand these differences and what are the roles of different creative directors in the industry nowadays and how these new languages, this branded content 
that we are making um, half different key roles and figures that um, that are you know as I said key for each part. But then when you are launching yourself in the industry, you want to know what are those roles and and when you're starting, you know, like I started, obviously. I mean, coming from Spain, um, one thing you learn is that you need to touch every everything. You know, you need yeah. to learn as much as you can to be ready for the competitive um, business work in creative. Um, yeah. And then that helped me a lot when I landed in the United States because I was able to um, work in different things. I think in America, in production, in uh, it depends on the field. You know, if you're a illustrator you illustrate you create with your tools in the world that i i put myself which is more in the production audiovisual uh, there is a lot of people in the chain and mm -hmm. i try not to specialize in one thing um it's something that i refuse to do even though when i landed in america people was more eager to tell you you need to be specialized in one thing or mm -hmm. you know the industry tries to tell you that mm -hmm. and to me it's been um it's been a continuous understanding of okay what i do want to do what it's you know the mediums that in the moment maybe um are the more trending topic for the things but then mm -hmm. at the same time it's like what are you interested on you know what mm -hmm. are, like uh, as we were talking before about storytelling and, and Disney language and branded content is all mixed up, you know, I think it's what are, what are you interested on? And then from there, what are the, the styles, techniques, things like that? Um, they can be many different things, but I think um, specializing on something, it has uh, good things and bad things. And I think it's important to understand yeah. everything and then, um, just make sure in the direction you want to go. Yeah, the process is very important also for the students to, to, to learn about this because uh, uh, you don't have like, the, like an image of the process when you are a student. Uh, you need to be working like for some years just to learn, not also learn the process of your agency or your client or whatever, because create your own. I don't know, uh, Julia, what do you think about the difference between the process maybe in Italy uh, against the United States? May, did you find a lot of difference or? I think the differences are uh, less now because, you know, living in a global world, collaborating between I don't know uh, if you're in, in an agency in Italy, maybe you collaborate with a supplier that is in the US or uh, if someone is in the US, maybe you work with, for example, I work with still with agencies in US and Europe. Mm -hmm. But what I see is that like there is more, like I think in the US, people are a little bit more used to, to the new tools. They are kind of more used of, uh, of seeing you know new things are also in, also in old media like mm -hmm. for example the new york times they use you know these fantastic infographics so it's pretty common to see good visualization good storytelling i think there is the quality is very high and i think people get used to better quality and that that's the difference i see yeah yeah nowadays uh, well Talent is everywhere, so um, I also, I, well, you mentioned the New York Times, and I know they work with illustrators for all around the globe, so it's yeah. A, yeah, a good way to, to work, no? Because yes, talent is everywhere, yeah. it's not only yeah. in the big cities, or so, so it's yeah, nice sure. to work with agencies or with uh, media like that, so, well, it's nice. I would like to ask you, uh, you both, what do you enjoy the most? of uh, your job or your your daily life uh, doing what you do and also what the students are going to or what what are you going to share with the students in your in your classes so uh what i enjoy the most is that it's a creative job it's always different you always learn you always have to know what's going on around you and so that's something I'm, I'm, I'm very curious. I like to learn. 
I like to improve my skills and try different things. I'm doing both illustration and graphic design, so I still like to do different things in my daily routine, my daily job. And, and yeah, for sure, I'm gonna talk with students about how to translate what's happening in the world in visual language, because like, for sure, visuals are super influenced by what's happening in the world. You mm -hmm. always have to be careful of what happens and knowing what's going around. And it's always changing. So you have to be curious and you have to be to like your your work. It's not a regular job. It's like something. Yeah. It's, it's also your passion. So you're actually you're working 24 hours a day because <laughs> when you're on social media, on social networks, you're not only scrolling social networks you're also studying and seeing what's happening yeah so yeah for sure we will we are gonna go into this we're gonna study how the difference between all the new media and the opportunities that the new media brings okay. and how creativity can be even nicer with new media and how the new techniques are influencing the language and for sure, how to transform stories into images, into compelling images, how to stand out in all this images world around us, how to tell across a story across different media, because usually if you do a campaign right now, it's not one media, it's going across yes, a whole bunch of media. So that's, that will be a big focus on, in our class for sure. Okay. And what about you, Lucas? Well, I think um, I think one thing that is very important is, um, I mean, at least to me, I think is um, be open. You know, be open to different things. I think inspiration is a very important thing, and um, you know, you never know when where inspiration is going to come from. So, I think it, I I always um, in the things that I teach, um, in, try to engage with the students to be open to discover things, you know, to read books, to mm. um, to see, to go to an art show and see something. And then, you know, there is ideas everywhere that are going to uh, feed you in your creative process. That's, I think that's something that I, that I enjoy as a creative is that with all the new, these new languages, with all these things that are happening, you know, like from a filter in Instagram, to an exhibition that the other day, for example, with a friend that she's specializing on augmented reality, she was showing me things that, that I didn't know that they were mm -hmm. doing nowadays, you know? And I think all these things open your mind to new yeah. territories and, and it's amazing. Um, I think what I like from my work is, is that I try to not make it very repetitive. So, um, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I work in different mediums, uh, animation, live action, different things in animation. So um, I'm not just on the computer all day. Like I mm -hmm. do physical stuff as well, which I love. And I think it's something that I've always been uh, leaning towards. Uh, my father is a painter and I think that's mm -hmm. maybe something that is inherited. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I think it's, it's important to to not be overwhelmed by mm -hmm. all the different, like there is a lot of possibility a day and maybe sometimes it can get frustration. You can get frustrated about trying to find your voice, but then at the same time, lose a little bit of the perspective with like, which are the software, what should I do? You know, new things that are out available for you every day. And I think, um, I, I think what I try to teach also in my classes in new language and, I think in branded content, I think in general, uh, is that you don't need to get obsessed with the new technologies that come out every day. You think, you need to think, you need to um, think about creative solutions that are good and then the medium will tell you, you know, like how. Mm. And then as well, I think now more than ever, it's easier also to, to, to get access to different things that teach you those tools. So... I think tools at the end, um, they are very important, but at the same time, it's something that 
I used to get, for example, more obsessed when I was younger, you know, <laughs> learning things and, and how you do this trick. Uh, and obviously, all these things, they stay on you uh, for the year, you know, and suddenly you use something that you learned a long time ago. But at the same time, um, you know, the things that work are sometimes the simple things. And, yeah. and then that, Sometimes it's not related to a technique. It's more about the time that you spend uh, thinking about a concept and yeah. then developing that idea um, little by little, you know. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's important that people, they are not afraid of learning new things and at the same time um, they're open to, to new things that will, you know, happen to them as students. Sí, yo creo, ahora cambio otra vez al, al castellano, eh, creo que una de las eh, cosas también más importantes de este máster es esta, como esta comunicación personal que, que habrá entre estudiantes y profesores, ¿no? Un poco lo que estás comentando también, Lucas, de estas referencias personales, vivencias personales, eh, todo esto, eh, aparte de reforzarlo en los estudiantes, creo que es bastante interesante que, que bueno, todos los profesores como que tengáis este acercamiento, ¿no? De cara a las clases. No todo es sobre teoría. Eh, no, claro. Importa muchísimo también la experiencia profesional que, que habéis tenido y, y sobre todo todo este punto de vista personal, ¿no? Porque son cosas que se van aprendiendo solo a lo largo de los años y, y bueno, cuando te acercas a, a intentar aprender eh, acerca de, en este caso, de contenidos, pues es bastante interesante que, que profesionales del sector te den su punto de vista personal, ¿no? Y que sepamos que eso es importante y que al final, en cualquier trabajo creativo, todo tu, tu punto de vista personal, todo lo que tú aprendas, todos tus referentes son tuyos y es lo que mola al final plasmaré en todos tus trabajos, ¿no? Eh, bueno, creo que nos hemos ido un, un poquito, bueno, estamos bien de tiempo porque esto era como un poco de presentación. Eh, yo ya solo para acabar también decir que, que, bueno, aquí hemos conocido a Julia y a Lucas, antes mencioné a algunos de los profesores internacionales que estarían en el, en el máster, pero por supuesto también contaremos con, con profesionales locales de las primeras agencias de, de Madrid, de... de y, y de Valencia y Barcelona, pues por ejemplo tenemos a María Bernal, que es eh, eh, profesional de storytelling que ha trabajado en agencias grandes y para clientes muy grandes, como Peter Gamble o algunas tecnológicas, Pedro Oliver, que ha trabajado durante 10 años con Sino Rasmor, con compañías muy grandes, Mauro Fuentes, que es director de, de comunicación digital del Corte Inglés, quiero decir, tendremos también este punto de vista global, que es una palabra muy de moda ahora y cada vez más de moda con todo este tema online, pandemic y demás, que, que importa tanto lo que pasa a tu lado como lo que está pasando a mil kilómetros alrededor. Eh, y, y nada, eh, un poquito espero que os haya ayudado a tener como un overview de todo lo que va a ser el máster de Trending Content. Eh, hemos hablado un, un poquito de todo, que es un poco también lo que veremos eh, en el máster, como decía al principio, un recorrido por todas las patas de una buena estrategia de contenidos, eh, desde la parte más estratégica a la más creativa y, y para contar historias eh, muy bien contadas. So, thanks a lot, Julia and Lucas, for Thank being you. here with us today in this uh, very hot day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and well, enjoy your summer and see you in November. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Looking forward to see you soon in class. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.